Hi guys. So now we are on to the 13th part of the must know radiological images. Uh, my name is Dr. Zainab Vora and I've uh, done my MBBS and MD in radiology from AIMS New Delhi. And uh, you can check out the previous 12 uh, short videos if you have missed them on the Unacademy PG YouTube channel. So today we want to talk about two uh, important uh, aortic arch anomalies which are uh, very very frequently tested in the entrances alright. So the first image that I'm actually showing you although we're talking about aortic arch anomalies usually they'll start off with dysphagia as the history which will kind of mislead you towards a lot of GI causes but it's very very important to understand that when you're looking at this barium swallow image there's a lateral view so you can see that these are the vertebral bodies so these are the vertebral bodies which are posterior while this is anterior so we are seeing a lateral view all right where this is anterior this is posterior and what you find here is that there is this indentation right there is this narrowing of the esophagus as depicted on the barium swallow posteriorly so this is why this patient has dysphagia so what is this extrinsic impression on the esophagus which is causing this narrowing and hence the dysphagia. So this is because of a vascular anomaly. So when they ask you, you're suspecting some sort of extrinsic impression posteriorly at this level, at the level, almost at the level of the bifurcation of the trachea, just above it at the level of the arch. When you see this sort of a narrowing, you are suspecting aberrant right subclavian artery. You are uh, expecting that the origin of right subclavian artery is unusual and that is why they'll ask you what is the investigation of choice or what is the best investigation to prove your diagnosis and the answer is going to be a CT angio or a CECT which will tell you, it will show you this uh, aberrant origin. So as you can see here on the CECT, this is the arch, this is the superior vena cava, this is the trachea. So this is trachea. This is SVC and this is arch. Normally, we will have all the vessels arising from the arch at a level superior to this. But here we find that here there is an anomalous vessel, there is an anatomical variation where there is a vessel coursing behind the esophagus. So this collapse structure here is the esophagus. And this vessel, which is nothing but the right subclavian artery, which is arising as a direct branch of arch. Normally, the right subclavian artery arises from the brachiocephalic artery, right? But here, it is a direct branch. So, see this image. So, when this right subclavian artery arises from the arch, goes posterior to the esophagus, it can cause compression. It can cause narrowing because of the pulsations, all right? So, that is why it causes dysphagia. That is why it causes this posterior indentation. So, this is about aberrant right subclavian artery, also called as dysphagia usoria, and this is the most common anatomical variation of the arch vessels that we see. Now, coming on to this image here of a child who's again come to you with uh, dysphagia, and what you actually find here is this narrowing, right? So, here you are having this circumferential narrowing actually at two points, which is right also, left also, and you're seeing an AP image. So, this in itself is a clue, all right? So, when they give you an AP image to show you compression from both the sides, it is indirectly uh, the diagnosis is given to you on the view itself and you think of double aortic arch. So double aortic arch is where the right as well as the left aortic arch are going to persist. Here you see the normal left sided aortic arch but here you have persistent of both the sides of aortic arch and what they are going to do is they are going to compress the midline structures which is trachea and esophagus and that is why they have this sort of circumferential narrowing better depicted on a AP view or a PA view. Right. So remember, double aortic arch when they show a frontal projection, you have a circumferential narrowing. If posterior indentation, think of ARSA. All right. So these are two images that I wanted you to see as far as um, the vascular anomalies, which in turn result in esophageal narrowings, are concerned. So I hope this is useful, and uh, see you with the next one. Thank you.